Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the IFG podcast. Sheikh Haytham, it's an absolute honor to have you on with us. Jazakallah khair for making the time. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I've grown up really, you know, listening to you and uh, hearing your lectures. So it's a real privilege to have you on. Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you. Barakallah fiqh. May Allah reward you. And may Allah reward the brothers and sisters behind uh, Islamic Finance Guru. Uh, but you just said that you grow up listening to my lectures. Yani either you meant to say that I'm too old <laughs> or you want to say that you are too young. Which one? Uh, or maybe both, which is worse? Uh, I think you should interpret it in the way that... Yeah, you is... know that yani, interviewing <laughs> me is not an easy job. You know this. <laughs> I don't I, know. I, I'm, I feel I'm like sure. I'm being interviewed. <laughs> yeah, of course. That, this is what I do in many cases. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether you have done your homework about my interviews. Maybe you were listening to my lectures, but not the interviews. Not the anyway. interviews. Yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's anyway. where I made the mistake. Right. Okay, Khalas, I will not yani, give you a hard time. No, no, just so, so you can start, no problem. Uh, we I remember already started, yani, but anyway. Absolutely. I remember you, in, you used to come to Jamas quite a lot as well, right? Back in the day. Yes, uh, so you are not a young person. Then, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm quite old now, I yeah, think. I'm yeah, getting grey hairs in my yeah, beard. Yeah, mashallah. Uh, so yeah. alhamdulillah. Uh, Sheikh, I wanted to ask you, you know, you've, uh, you came from, you know, the Middle East to the UK and you're someone who, you're, you're one of the, you know, important shuyukh who focus on Islamic finance. And I just wanted to, you know, just get your story about how you got into it, because not every uh, scholar gets into this area. Yeah. What led you to it? Is, is it yeah. interest or what was it? Yeah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Actually, there are a number of reasons behind that. Uh, first of all, uh, Islamic finance is one of the miracles. Yeah. And uh, I remember that brother uh, Tariq Niwani, he started his journey towards practicing Islam through Islamic finance, when he read about Islamic finance, and then he was so amazed that it was so robust system, uh, you cannot fool it. And also, it is a system that aims to provide people with prosperity, with fairness, with, uh, and it is not taking advantage of anyone. Yeah? And no one can take advantage of his, uh, his, his status or his wealth or so on. So uh, this is one main reason is that, okay, it is a miracle. So it is really when, when people uh, go into it and uh, read about it, understand it, they will be attracted to it. So I was initially, I was reading about it as I was reading about Islamic jurisprudence. I studied Islamic jurisprudence with different scholars. So I was reading about it and then I started to look little bit deeper into it. Uh, this is one reason. Another main reason, uh, I worked for a company called Lucent Technologies. I was a computer engineer and then I moved to this company to work as, uh, as, a, uh, as a quality management consultant, just purely uh, management. And uh, in that company, subhanAllah, I felt that Allah Jalla Ala sent me to that company. In that company, I became the Imam that was in Saudi Arabia. And it is a big, uh, mainly American company. And there were so many expats from different mm -hmm. countries. And they started to ask me at that time, that time was late, uh, late 90s. Yeah, late yeah. 90s. So there was a boom in in, in uh, stocks in stock market yeah. and shares. So they were asking me about uh, stocks and shares, etc., etc. So I found myself compelled to study about uh, stocks and shares in order to, uh, to, to, to be able to answer their questions. And in fact, I was planning to do my master's degree on stocks and shares. So that was also a journey. When I came, uh, that was also part of the journey. When I came to the UK in 2001, I found that many of the questions I receive, they are related to Islamic finance. So this is also another element. So if you add all these elements, then I found myself uh, okay, going into this field, uh, then maybe what is the, the, the tip of iceberg or anyway, uh, is that, that I found that there is 
uh, a lot of misconception regarding yeah. Islamic finance, uh, misuse of Islamic finance, and then I found that I have to, you know, uh, contribute in correcting these misconceptions. No, Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting uh, journey that because, uh, you know, I, I, what I want to ask you is also about what you found about the Islamic finance industry. Because in many ways, I, I think I share the, you know, the same sentiment, which is where I, I came at Islamic finance from a very grassroots level. Mm. Like, what are the individual problems that people have? Yeah. How can we solve them? And, you know, I worked in the city and I saw how Islamic finance is done in the corporate world. Yeah. And I realized that that's not for me. I, yeah. I felt, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, I felt that that wasn't, long term, it wasn't, you know, that impactful. Yeah. It, it wasn't going to add value to the world. Yeah. Um, and, and rather the kind of, the way to solve it is, you know, actually address real needs of people. Yeah. Um, but, but I wanted to ask you, what's your kind of experience of, the like the corporate yeah. and personal yeah. and finance and how has that changed yeah. over the time? This, this is a good question. Actually, um, there are a number of problems regarding Islamic finance. Uh, first of all, the limited understanding of Islamic finance. This is a huge problem. Many mm. people think that Islamic finance is the prohibition of riba, one, and on the other side, providing. Uh, financial transactions that are Sharia compliant. Hmm. That's all. Yeah, this is Islamic finance, and therefore they try to uh, produce certain certain products. Yeah, uh, different forms of musharaka, different forms of mudaraba, different forms of uh, of murabaha, and so on and so forth. But Islamic finance is bigger than this. Bigger than this. And we have to understand that because, uh, see, Islam, in order to be able to provide humanity with the correct solutions, and in order to be able to identify the size of the, the or the gravity of the current problems regarding yeah. the financial system. And as you know that now there is you know, a discussion, deep discussion. Who controls who? Politics control finance or finance control politics. Mm. And then ideology, yeah, is in the middle of both sides. Is ideology, does ideology influencing Islamic finance or finance uh, or does ideology influencing uh, politics? And so these are the three main pl players yeah. you can say in the world, ideology, politics and finance. Yeah, this yeah. is my view regarding in any way. So, so who controls who? Yeah. Now, when we understand the nature of Islamic finance and that it is a comprehensive, holistic uh, system that is interfering in our social life, in our in all of in all aspects of our life, and it is heavily influenced by our ideology, yeah. then we can understand that if the world does not accept Islam as an ideology, they will not benefit that much from Islamic finance. However, let me say this, it's very important. Uh, it is, Islam is a very miraculous religion. Yeah, Islam is the light. It can penetrate any place, any, yeah? You cannot block the light of the, 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 the light of the sun, yeah, and the rays of the sun. So even if you block it, it will still affect the surface. Mm. Yeah? And this is the power of Islam. So even if you do not have an ideological system that can foster Islamic finance, still Islamic finance can be beneficial for that system, even if that system is anti-Islamic. Mm. Yeah, still people can benefit from Islam, from Islamic finance as well, even if the system is not just un-Islamic, no, anti-Islamic. Okay, yeah. so this is one big problem, a huge, you can say, intellectual, ideological problem about Islamic finance. The second main problem about Islamic finance is that uh, uh, we, uh, because because of the first problem, because we do not have the ideological infrastructure 
to foster true Islamic finance yeah. and Islamic financial products, what happens is that we started to compromise mm. because we want to fit into a body that is alien to Islamic finance. Mm. So we started to compromise in order to find a place, in order to fit, in order maybe to convince them. And that led to so many problems in Islamic finance. And that's why Islamic finance in, in many cases is unable to provide societies, different societies with the intended solutions Islamic finance would uh, be able to, to, to uh, provide if there was the proper uh, ideological fostering system. Mm. And that what, you know, John Foster, he was uh, the ex-editor of the International Islamic Magazine, something like this. He's a non-Muslim guy. He wrote an article that really need to be, we need to be aware of it in 19, sorry, in 2000 and uh, 2009, 10, after the global 2008 recession. Yeah. And he said, has Islamic finance lost the opportunity to provide the globe with solutions? And he alluded to the fact that uh, Christianity has lost the opportunity because comp Christianity compromised mm. a lot and it lost its value. Mm. Yeah, because see, generally speaking, if I, if I have my own values and you have a uh, very simple, very simple, it doesn't need a very intellectual, you know, sophisticated intellectual uh, setup. If I have my values and you have your own values, I compromise my values to fit into your values, I have no values anymore. So the, mm. you don't call them my values. I'm now adopting your values, okay? Mm. So if Islamic finance is compromising in order to fit uh, into different systems, it is not anymore Islamic finance. Yeah. So maybe it is called Islamic finance, just a name, mm. just a, a title, but it loses the spirit, it loses its strength, it loses its ability to provide solutions. Okay, for humanity, and this is what is happening now. To I don't, I, I, it is difficult to say that this is happening across the globe. Yeah. But it is happening to to many uh, many societies, many many sectors, and yeah. and and many many even uh, financial uh, yeah. institutions. But Sheikh, so I, I, we can go into like some specifics in China later on on like Islamic mortgages as an example of I yeah. guess this discussion. Yeah. Um, but one like broad question I wanted to ask you, which is I think it's a it's a big tussle that we have to kind of weigh up, which is you know how do we in a, like this globalized world where everything is so interconnected now, yeah. and it's so. Like, you know, when you're developing, you know, financial technology these days, you're using, um, you know, software from America and Germany, regulation in the UK. It's all kind of combined yes. together. Yes. And the money flows are, yes. you know, you might be, you know, your data might be going to Latvia or something. How do you, um, you know, provide a system that is, uh, you know, that is pure, truly Islamic. And what I mean by that is, you know, the system that we use in the UK is not really a UK system anymore. Like the UK government, I don't think has that much control over it yeah. anymore. It's almost like these big corporates yes. these days, they set the agenda yeah. and and the governments are kind of always trying to play catch up. Yes. So from, from what you're saying, I think it sounded like we need like an Islamic kind of way of you know, an alternative, but how does that, you know, yeah. what's the excellent. story? Yeah, excellent. This is really you know, a deep discussion. Okay. And see, remember, I would like to say again, yeah, I would like to re-emphasize on what I have said that even anti-Islamic societies, yeah, they can still from Islamic, they can still benefit from Islamic finance and Islamic finance can operate as Islam, Islam in general, mm. can operate, can function, can flourish in any alien system. This is the nature of Islam. That's why no one can stop Islam. No. Yeah. Similarly, Islamic finance can also uh, exist in alien systems, in 
anti-Islamic system. However, it will not flourish, that flourishment, if there is no ideological framework. This is what I am saying, yeah, because some people might misunderstand this point. The, 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 regarding your point, this is a very deep, you know, discussion, and now it is discussed on, on, on high levels. Yeah, they say, okay, what shall we do? The entire global financial system is not just non-Islamic, is anti-Islamic. So mm. how, so what shall we do? So we need to work, and this is, see, this is the type of solutions that I always recommend. And these types of solutions that I always recommend, they are, uh, they are based on the Islamic philosophy. Yeah, the Islamic philosophy, if you read the Quran, you will see in the Quran, for example, that Quran is dealing with all types of people, all types of circumstances, all types of situations, all types. Of, yeah, if you want to talk about peace, so it is there in the Quran. If you want to talk about fighting, yes. Uh, it is there قاتلوا الذين يلونكم من الكفار وليلدوا فيكم غلظة قاتلوا الذين يقاتلونكم and so on you will find both if you want to talk about uh, love you will find it in the Quran if you want to talk about hate it is there in the Quran because we are human beings the one who loves he hates the one who hates mm -hmm. he, is, he loves no one says that I love I don't hate it means that he has no emotions and he is just cheating himself yeah okay this is anyway a, a huge intellectual area uh, we can touch on it another time now when we talk about uh, what is the solution the solution is based on what i have said the solution is a multifaceted solutions solution uh, which means that we need to work on different dimensions so we need to work on a dimension whereby if we can produce another Islamic system. Mm. This is number one. Yeah. However, we should not, and this is wrong, many people, many Islamic groups, many intellectuals, you know, when they believe in one solution, they just go for that and they become anti-other solutions. Mm. Yeah. And this is wrong, whether in social, regarding social problems, financial problems, political problems, there might be, and this is life. Okay. And life is interdependent. All systems in life are in their interdependent. So you cannot just find a solution, okay? In isolation. And, uh, yeah, in isolation or exclusively from other solutions. So we need, we need some people, maybe some countries, to work on producing another alternative, completely mm. uh, different, yeah? Whether that is based on gold, or that is based on another system which I am recommending, I might mention it, okay, in, in, in a minute. On the other hand, we need also to work within the systems or the system that we have now. However, when we work within that, we need to understand what we can compromise on and what we cannot compromise mm. on. And see, this is the problem of, this is the problem of, of uh, jurists, this is the problem of scholars, this is a prob this is the problem of uh, du'at, scholars, etc. They don't, this issue, uh, either you find strict people, yeah, uh, strict orthodox people, or you find so-called moderate, liberal, yeah. compromising liberal people. We need to know when we need to be liberal, and we need mm -hmm. to know when we need to be orthodox and district. Again, if someone were to say, yeah, for example, our especially young brothers, they said, what? We as Muslims need to be liberal? Okay, don't, don't worry about the, the name. But as I said, this is the nature of Islam. Mm. This is the nature of Islam. It fits into any situation and it has the ability to fit into any situation and it to transform that situation into the best situation, mm -hmm. yeah? So, um, simply, uh, a lady just accepted Islam, she might not be wearing the proper clothes. Islam yeah. wouldn't tell her no until you wear 
full veil, full black, whatever, whatever, we are not welcoming you. No. Mm. Islam says, no, you are most welcome. And you can perform your salah, prayers, etc. And the Jannah, the paradise is open for you. Yeah? So then Islam enters her heart and then she will be what? Developing herself and Islam will not leave her until she practices fully. So similarly, we uh, in any system this is the case so we need to find uh, a place within the current systems mm. yeah for islamic finance mm. and maybe compromise on certain things yeah mm. and not compromise on other things let me give you an example yeah. if i may yeah It'd be great to talk about maybe Islamic mortgages at this point, because I think that's a... Um, okay, we, we can talk about Islamic mortgage, but let me... Okay, uh, because Islamic mortgage, maybe we have a limited time, but let me give you an example of insurance. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let me give you an example of insurance, just quickly. See, uh, by the way, I wanted to say, maybe we can have another, uh, maybe... Uh, we should, podcast, yeah. <laughs> we should yeah, probably, yeah. That Islamic finance is easy. Mm. Islamic finance I written I have written a summary of Islamic finance in one page just one page and if you understand it yeah that is enough mm. okay we tend to make it complicated because yeah. we just want to yeah, 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 yeah uh, come across as we yeah. are the experts in Islamic finance etc yeah. all these you know sophisticated things are applications of these rules which can be summarized in one page as i have done see uh, what is islamic finance what, what is the summary any any transaction in islam is allowed this is the ruling al asl al hil except so the haram is the exception yeah except if it has ظلم full mm -hmm. stop yeah yeah now the ظلم can be ظلم against Oppression. Either human beings or against yourself, which is vulm against your relationship with Allah Jalla Ala. Yeah. Now, uh, against vulm against others. Yeah. It can be either a cheating, which is clear anyway. Mm. It can be riba. Yeah. Or it can be gharab or gambling. Yeah. Or any transactions that will lead to. Uh, to to uh, disunity. Yeah. These are the main reasons for the prohibition. The main reasons for any transaction to be prohibited. Now, we can, of course, the cheating is clear. Yeah, we do not compromise on cheating, or in buying and selling that will create problems. Okay, what we are left with is mainly riba and gharar. Yeah, I compromise on gharar. Hmm. So, the, so, so uh, insurance that has elements of gharar, uncertainty, yeah, I am easy with it, provided that both sides agree to it. Hmm. Yeah, and now there is a trend within, you know, uh, Islamic finance scholars and experts to again to overlook that. Hmm. Yeah, however. What we cannot compromise on is what? The riba. The riba. Hmm. Yeah? So, if we get into non-Islamic uh, setup, yeah, and we want to, uh, what is it, to produce uh, Islamic products, we need to know that, yeah, maybe gharar, if there is a consent from both sides, can be overlooked. Yeah. However, when we come to, when we come to Riba, that is not, that is something that we cannot compromise mm. on whatsoever. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. And I would like maybe to conclude because of time, uh, or maybe we have still five minutes. See, we have to understand that what is haram in sharia, yeah? What is haram in sharia is not haram only because, because of the akhirah or because it is the right of Allah Jalla Ala, yeah? You rarely find a haram like this. Mm. You might find some haram related to some acts of ibadah. Mm. But haram other than this, 
It has impact on our life. It's harmful. It is harmful. Okay. And therefore, people should not say, well, well let us compromise on the haram. Yeah? Uh, because it will be counterproductive in the dunya, not necessarily in the akhirah. Mm -hmm. That's why this haram, for example, al riba, which is a big sin. Gharar, uncertainty, is not a big sin. And the Prophet ﷺ did not say that it is a sin, even. Mm -hmm. The Prophet ﷺ, naha, he prohibited yeah. this kind of, yeah, because it leads to some problems. Mm -hmm. That's why some scholars said, what is the illa, mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, the legal cause behind the prohibition yeah. of riba? Is it because there is no consent because, be, be, between both sides? Is there any cheating? Or is it... Uh, in of itself, yeah? yeah? So, no, the illa is, there is no consent. There is a possibility of a cheating. Yeah. And therefore, if there is a consent and there is no possibility of cheating, it can be overlooked. Hmm. However, riba, in, in of itself, itself yeah. yes, in of itself is problematic, yeah? In of itself, the illa is, uh, the illa is exchanging money for more amount of money, or a riba we, or a riba for a different amount of riba and Allah Jalla wa ala made it what? made it as a source of problems yeah that's why Allah Jalla wa ala says الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ الْرِبَا لَا يَقُومُنَا إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِي يَتَخَبَّطُوا شَيْطَانِنَا مِنَا الْمَسْرِ and that's why the, the prohibition of riba is a grave prohibition unlike the prohibition of gharar hmm. so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah cursed the riba, the one who consumes riba, the one who gives riba, and the one who facilitates, yeah, you know, the contract of riba. So it is not any prohibition. So we cannot compromise on it. Yeah. And consuming riba, for example, mortgage. Now many people say that, you know, there is a fatwa that you can have one, one, one house. Yeah. Okay. On conventional mortgage. And we say no, because this is, although you might think that it is a, a, a solution for you, but that is in a micro short term. Mm. But on a macro term, this will damage the economy. And the main reason behind this recession of 2008 was what? Was the prime mortgage. Yeah. yeah? If you remember that. So, uh, riba, the haram of riba is not a solution, even for one house. And this is what our brothers and sisters have to understand. And as I, I, I always say that, if you are thirsty, yeah, you might think that salty water is what? Is going to extinguish your thirst. Mm. But in reality, you might think that, drink it, it will make your problem worse. Yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, Sheikh, I mean, let's, let's park I think, the Islamic mortgages because I think that's mm. going to take a bit of time yeah. to gonna get into. Mm. The final thing uh, perhaps for today that would be really helpful, I think, mm. is um, how do we as Muslims navigate uh, difference? You know, there's so many different opinions out there, especially on these technical matters of Islamic finance, mm. where Muslims, ordinary Muslims won't really even know you know, what this is all about. Yeah. How does an ordinary Muslim navigate this? I agree. See, again, this is a very long subject. However, let us make it short. If, okay, the person has a trust, because, see, Allah Jalla wa Ala says uh, in the Quran, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْأَخِرِ وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمْ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ So, refer it to Allah and His Messenger. You might not be able yourself to refer it to Allah and His Messenger. What to do? Then follow what you believe that this is a reference to Allah and His Messenger. Hmm. By following a scholar whom you believe that he is what? He is telling what Allah Jalla wa Ala wants and what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants. This is in a nutshell. Yeah. However, you might say, well, I trust both scholars, yeah. this and that. And they, they disagree. <laughs> yeah, and they disagree. Yeah. In this case, I always say, yeah, see, in sensitive matters that have riba, etc., double check 
And I am sure that if people double check, they will come up with a conclusion. The problem is when people double check, they are motivated by a desire. Mm. Yeah, some people, of course, not all. Yeah, and I say to people, if you go to your eye doctor, yeah, if he tells you take this medicine, and you heard that this medicine is dangerous for your eyes, yeah, will you risk it and take it? Probably not. Most likely yeah. not. You will double check until you make sure that this is safe. This is really yeah. medicine. We should treat. Uh, issues like uh, issues uh, uh, related to Islamic finance and many other sensitive issues hmm. like that. Hmm. Yeah. No, Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh. Um, probably we should end there. I, mm. I feel like this, you know, we could probably talk for three, four hours here. Yes, yes. Um, yes and inshallah, exactly. we should. But maybe we should do regular things. Yeah, and, maybe. And, inshallah. You know, get your get your knowledge. Um, Jazakallah khair once again for making the time. Jazakallah khair. Um, this is maybe a taster for you and for <laughs> the, 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 the brothers and sisters. And then inshallah, inshallah. maybe we can, yeah. Let's do it. Carry on, yeah, on no. uh, this discussion. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.